All right. Um, quick little check here. Yep. Just before we get into the deal and doing the big draft preview, the definitive mock. Okay. Just when he wanted me to do a quick little like room temp thing. He wants to know, put your hand up if you've been drafted to an AFL club before. Okay. That's no. one. Hand definitely up. Your hands are down. No, not in real life. Um, on AFL Live PlayStation. No, I that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Just in real life. So my hands definitely still up. Because you've got Gil on. You should, it's actually, that should be illegal to have that on there. So <laughs> so just so I can get back to him quickly before he comes in here. Yeah. One. Okay. And you're a. And I'm none. You're none. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yep. So, so we're, I, all, we're good with that. So yeah, one I'm just trying none. to remember how many games I played for this. Um, pick 10. And what we should do before we get into a deal here, I think whoever goes pick 10, we get around hard. Yeah. As like a little, hey, you probably got 30 games in you. <laughs> a little, trust me, mate. If the averages go to go by, you've got 30 to 35 games in your career. And that's a little, the orange pick. How about for, for every year that this show gets a bit bigger and obviously mm-hmm. the dollars oh, come cash. in. Cash. Uh, we sponsor Pick 10. Yeah, done. Whoever's Pick 10 we're yeah. sponsoring and we'll write, I don't know if you want to be on the letter. I'll be on the letter somewhere. Okay, we're going to send them a letter from yeah. us and it'll be like a, hey, yeah. congrats, enjoy the next seven years. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Dan Does Footy Podcast. You can find more of Dan Does Footy on the website, Spotify, YouTube and social media. There was heaps of sick kids and I was like, where are they? Kick them harder. Kick them all harder. Punch them in the face. I'm bloody horizontally challenged if you get what I mean. Oh no. Oh, tough crowd today. <laughs> Should we say this is the line? If you don't hear the next bit, it's over the line. Okay, so you're doing the next bit. I've got a line. Who's just walked past Punt Road? He dips in. Dip up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're waiting for. The definitive mock draft. And this is a guy who loves studying tape. Not just highlights like you and me, Ollie. Mm-hmm. A guy who dedicates his life to knowing everything about the next wave, the next crop, the next young studs in the group. You know, strengths, weaknesses, what they have for breakfast, what time they shit, everything. And a man's mock draft is something you don't muck around with. No. Never. You take that seriously. Ever, ever. He loves the draft process, the cycle. Should be an AFL recruiter. Mm-hmm. His knowledge. He's got a big brain. Big brain, but he's not. And we're glad he's not because he's a content creator. He knows everything about the draft, as we said. Please welcome Dylan Alexander to the program. Welcome. Welcome, mate. This is big. Boys, thanks for having me. Your time to shine. Now, you, uh, as I said to you off mic, just your knowledge on the draft is next level. How did you get here? It's a good question. I think like a lot of things were kind of happening all at the same time that sort of coalesced into this this moment. Um, I've always been a little bit of a footy nerd, like always kind of looked to try to get into those deeper questions mm, about like footy. Mm. Deep thinking. Yeah, mm. deep thinking, mm. deep thinking, mm. um, formations. There's a poetry to it all, isn't there? <laughs> there there's, really is, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a bit, yeah. A bit it's of a rain, man. long 45 yeah. to an hour, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I guess like for my lifestyle, I was, I was living overseas for quite a while. I sort of came back and I hadn't been into football that much while I was over there. I sort of got into some other sports which probably helped me in some ways to maybe understand the game a little bit better as well. But I came back, got into a bit of a career change, but I sort of used football as a bit of a connector, I think, Mm -hmm. between like people that I was getting, you know, friends, old Mm -hmm. friends that I was getting back into contact with and changed my profession. I sort of got into a bit of documentary filmmaking, Mm -hmm. a little bit of video making and stuff like that when I Mm -hmm. came back and sort of used football as a a vehicle for that, a bit of a subject and... um, Decided at the beginning of the year I was going to go along to a Coates Talent League game, and oh, the rest is there. yeah, the rest is history really. And now I'm coming on shows like this talking about uh, how the drive. good. What brings you to one of those games? It's like slow weekend. Yeah, I honestly I don't know. Like I had been, like I said, I was interested in video making in, yep. in the content creation world, and I think I sort of did see trying to find information on the AFL in general was a little bit difficult. Like there's still gaps I suppose in the massive in the content creation in those areas and I, I just got it into my head that'd be cool my first videos that I did were wildly unpopular oh welcome to the club yeah, <laughs> yeah. That like, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was vlogging it wasn't a, a popular template to go with but yeah just I started doing some like talking head stuff talking yep. more about the stats of the players I think people connected with it trying to sort of get into the draft particularly I think when you follow a club that are really unsuccessful 
throughout the season. It's something to... Mm. Mm. St Kilda's, your Essendon's. Your North Melbourne's. Because your season probably starts at the draft yeah. at that point. And I think 95% of my viewers are Richmond fans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Year, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are you doing overseas then? Before we come uh, I was teaching English. So oh. again, I was early 20s, just started sort of backpacking and yeah. I ended up in Russia and I lived there for about eight years in the end. What? Yeah. Wow. How was Russia? Uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Um, different, yeah, definitely a different culture and a, yeah. an eye opener. Sure. But yeah, sort of while I was over there, didn't, I mean, I followed the AFL, like I had an eye on it, but I got into some other sports as well. So yeah. Yeah. What's big in Russia? Soccer? Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest yeah, sport. Yeah. Yeah. Um, CSKA, Moscow, I would have thought you'd be. Yeah, Tiaska, Zenit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you've got the ice hockey, which is. Yeah. They're okay. pretty mad about ice hockey yeah, as well. Just so. angry bastards over there. Yeah. yeah. I see yeah. that. Yeah, right. Well, as you said, there's a massive. Uh, we feel, and that's why you're here, because we feel like there's a huge gap in the the footy world at the moment where everyone kind of knows maybe the first one, two, three picks, really, outside yep. of that. Like last year, Harley Reid was the, the big one. Mm -hmm. Everyone knew Harley Reid towards, yep. but no one really cared at the start of the year. But come draft time, everyone's like, oh, Harley Reid's a superstar. Yep, got to take him, got to take him. So really, we were so happy to hear, mate, because you, your knowledge, as we said, is just so wide and so deep. And we can't wait to get into this thing with you and try and mock out what's going to happen on Wednesday night. A big night for one club. Probably it's their draft is Richmond. So they've got... Picks 1, 6, 10, 11, 18, 20, 23, 24. That's setting themselves up for the next decade if they get it right, which is a big one. That's the big if, isn't mm, it? The big if. Because I, like, in doing some of these podcasts, I, I had a look at some other clubs that have had those kind of draft halls. Mm -hmm. You think back to your GWSs, your Gold Coast. But if you go right? back, like, a little bit further to mm. that as well, you've got Melbourne, who around 2008, 2009, oh, yeah. that was when they were getting all those priority picks in. Mm. They had a couple of drafts there where I think they had about five picks inside the top 25, 30. Yeah. Wasn't good. Yeah. So no. that was your your Scullies, your Trengoves, yep. Sam Blease, Tapscott, yeah, those kind of players. Yeah. I think over that two-year period, only one of those players, I think nine, ten players came through the door. Only one of them went on to be a premiership player. Wow. In, yeah, right. in 2021. So you've got the flip side, but then you have seen teams like, not that the Giants have won a flag, but no. they've drafted really well. They, hit, they were able to retain them. Like uh, you talk about, you know, 2011 there. So pick one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, 10, 11, 13, 14 were John Patton, Kenilio, Tyson, Hoskin Elliott, uh, Buntine, Hayes. Haynes, uh, Tomlinson, Sumner, Green, Adams, and Smith. Well, that's handy, even though they all <laughs> yeah. kind of went. And then the Gold Coast was the same the year before. Just had, I mean, pick 10 was always, I think it's pretty good actually. And there's, yeah, there's always a couple <laughs> of misses. Was, like you're not yeah. going to get them all no. right. But it gives you so much more scope when you have multiple picks to be able to speculate a bit yeah. though. Like you can take those yeah. high high upside, high risk players. Yeah. Is that, you reckon Richmond do that with that many picks? They can be like, you know what, let's just get our first couple shored up and but the rest of them we can kind of just- For sure. The stars. For sure. Because particularly too, where they've got like, Back to backs. Yeah. 10 and 11, um, 23, 24. And, and with this draft, like a lot of people have been talking about how deep it is and how strong mm. it is. Like it definitely does go back. So those late first rounders that they've got, 23, 24, I reckon they'll be able to do a bit of damage there. And even if it does seem like they have a bit of a reach, they'll be able to go like, oh yeah, we, we need a key defender here or we need a key forward or, a, yep. you know, yep. outside mid. They'll be able to speculate. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, let's not muck around. Let's get into it. We're going to do the first round. Is that what we're doing? Do the first round. Yeah. Yeah. Let's the do definitive it. mock draft Wednesday deal. You'll lead the ship, mate, and we'll chime in every now and then and just give us a uh, probably because, some. Because this mid, uh, this sorry, this draft is very midfield heavy. Mm. One thing that I just want to take you through quickly yeah. before we start is something that I worked on. I feel like in under 18 footy, you can get a little bit caught up in the, the numbers yep. and the performances. So I, I had a look rather than just looking at what they're sort of putting down now, I had a look at how they're going to project to AFL level and looking at how AFL midfields are running at the moment. Love and this. I think most, pretty much most midfields are running sort of three different types. So if you're an AFL midfielder at the moment, you're one of three types. And they, I call them the archetypes, which are the strike midfielder. That's like your heavily offensive, really kind of athletically a very speed dominant mm -hmm. athlete. Think about players like Christian Petrarca, Isaac mm -hmm. Heaney, Jason Horn Francis, Harley Reid, those really like explosive guys. Mm. They gain a lot of meters, big on score involvements, yep. big attacking offensive threats. Then you've got your engine midfielders. Mm -hmm. That's more of your like Caleb Sarong, Andy Brayshaw, Nick Dacos, I'd yep. even throw into that mold, even though he has a, a bit more of an attacking flair to him. They're more of your endurance-based athletes. 
Yeah. Um, and then you've got the third type, which is a defensive sort of anchor midfielder. They're probably, as far as quality, they're a little bit less mm. down down the rung, probably don't have the footy skills or the athleticism of those other guys, yep. or they're just failed yep. in those other guys. So I think that's an, a way we can kind of go through this Love and that. break up how they're going to look because you – People get very obsessed with the play, the endurance-based midfielders because they put up the big numbers. Yep. Your Levi Ashcrofts, sure. your mm-hmm. Jagger Smiths, they're getting 35 touches. If you look back historically at players like Harley Reid, Jason Horn francis Christian Petrarca, their numbers are a lot more modest. Mm-hmm. Most of them never yep. hit like averaging 20 disposals across yep. the season. Reid was 19 in the talent league. Horn francis around 16 in, in, SA, okay. in SA as well. So, yeah, there's a... Mm. Don't, yeah, don't let numbers fool you. Kind of thing. Kind of, yeah. 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 And, and look at, consider the athletic type mm-hmm. when, you're, when you're projecting the player because some yep. of those more explosive ones, they take a little bit longer to, to feel yeah. things I out. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit, was, but we'll get into the certain players that are into it, but a player like, I'm sure there's players now that you've seen like, oh, you're probably closer to your ceiling than what other players might, and that probably might come into it as well. Do you take in senior football against men at all or not? Yeah, um, like you want to be able to see that okay. for sure. But it's sort of like it's hard because the VFL, like as we know, like it's a, it's a pretty big step down. Yeah. Particularly. Yeah. The one huge. thing that you see between the AFL, the top level and that next level down is athleticism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can have, you've got some really high footy IQ guys, highly skilled footy guys running around in the VFL, but they probably don't have absolutely rapid pace, no. you know, yeah. like they can't burst through. That's a great point. That is the gap, like massively, that I've found. Not that I, I'm, you know, a shit kicker, but the gap is from VFL to AFL is like it's quicker. Yep. They jump higher, yep. they hit harder. Like it is an athletic gap. There's yeah, so yeah. many more talented players, probably in the VFL. And you see at local levels where you're like, you are so talented, but they never got up to the biggest stage because they just athletically couldn't run with the other players or they couldn't leap as high or jump. Like mm. that is the gap. That's or, or once you're there, obviously the professionalism, <clears throat> there's a gap, you're, yeah. you're working, yeah. you're working. A lot comes into it. And, yeah, in, and in our sport with like how big the, the squads are, how big the on-field actual list spots are, like you've got, you're going to have a large proportion of the team that's not super athletic no. as well. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's those top guys and we're talking about the top 10. So yeah. yeah. Worth considering. Great. Love that. Brilliant. Good um, purposing. I'll get into the mock now. So I've yes. got- Here we go. The mock. Let's go, I, deal. Deals, mock. Deals, mock. <laughs> deals, mock. <laughs> deals, mock. Um, I don't think this would be particularly surprising to anyone. And this comes into this because a lot of people have knocked this guy because he hasn't put up the numbers consistently. In the national champs, he only averaged about 12 touches. Plays as like a mid-hybrid forward. He's very big. He's very powerful. He's got that speed element to his game that mm. makes him a real threat at stoppages. Very strong. He's got guys coming to tackle him. He's... Don't argue. He's dusty style. It's Sam Lawler. Oh, yeah, I've seen him. He's yeah. a he's a beast. He's a tank. Yeah, he is. He's a dog. One eighty eight centimeters and really good overhead as well. So you can like plunk him in the forward line. Yep. He's going to take grabs. He's really dangerous one on one. But one thing probably a lot of people haven't talked about with Lawler is his handballing to be able to release other players into the game too. So he can just be that that big body sort of stay at home mid. He can get the ball and he's got. Um, he's got a lot of different like velocities to his handballing. So mm-hmm. he can give you that big sort of like long arching one. Yep. He can get the in tight one. He's got really nice hands, really good footballer. And he was a cricketer um, coming through his junior career. So he's never really done an AFL preseason. He's a country boy. So he's sort of got that greater upside yep. compared he, to some of the other players. AFL ready straight away? Yeah, I think he can play. I don't think he's going to be a guy that, like I said, with those endurance, more endurance based mids, he's a speed guy. Yep. Um, more of the fast twitch muscle fibers. He'll take a couple of years, I think, to really see. Build that tank in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, right. needs, he needs time. He needs preseasons. Okay. But I think he'll play. Yeah. I saw some of his stuff. It's like full, no one's going to be dusty, but that kind of, the way he moves is like burst out. It's, like those yeah. little short bursts of just power. Welcome back to SEN. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's unreal. Like it's crazy. Like okay. this guy is going to be. So if he, so he's obviously number one and then north of two. So north would be playing. Is he like the clear number one here? Obviously Levi, yeah. but outside it's, of Levi. I think it's very likely just yep. with how strong the links have been. Yeah. Um, and I think that's how recruiters see it. Like what I said off the top with the projecting him at AFL level. Yeah. He's the damaging. He's going to be the high score involvement player and the, the offensive threat. So that's why he's kind of risen to the top. Okay. Um, the other, the only other player that I think is a potential chance there is Finn O'Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. And he's probably caught between those two positional things, like that sort of endurance mid. He's, he's really a hybrid athlete mm-hmm. in the sense that he's probably the only player at the combine that ran a 
sub six minute 30 2k time trial okay mm-hmm. and a sub three second 20 meter sprint yeah at least the only one that did it from the top group of midfielders that have that quality yep. you know like on the ball as well um he's like a 184 centimeter midfielder so he's pretty standard height but he's got he's absolutely springy like he's got mm. that as- elasticity yeah in him to be able to take marks think about a player at the afl like an isaac heaney um, maybe a little bit more mid dominant one because Heaney played most of his footy as a as a forward, but he yep. did play juniors as a mid as well. So something like an Isaac Heaney, and yeah, the perfect little hybrid. And he's got that burst from stoppage, like a Sam Lawler. He doesn't have the strength because yep. he's more of a lightly framed guy. So I wouldn't call him mm-hmm. powerful. Okay, mm. but he's got a bit more of that lateral movement, so he can sort of get out of stoppage using his agility and those sort of moves get forward, take a mark overhead because of his his jump as well, his yeah. vertical jump. Right. That I, you know what I love about the pick one is that I love that they've said to Sam Lawler, like, you're a pick one and we don't want to tarnish that by bidding on Levi. Like, we want you to feel like, no, no, you are the best kid in the draft. Mm-hmm. You're the best. You are the undoubted pick one. But easily, like, the thing would be like, oh, everyone just bid on Levi. Yeah. I and love I, that from Richard if they do that. I, I feel like I would just have a bid. Even if I didn't rate him as the absolute number one player, yeah, I'd probably just have a pop just to make them shake things up a bit, make them pay, yeah, because yeah, they're I'd, paying less than after pick one, aren't they? Yes, yeah, and, and you already get um, points wise as far as like the draft value index, you already get a twenty percent discount. Question: mm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you in the points. Talk me through this. So I am obviously aware of how the father son works. That that's I, I get that. Yeah, but how? Does it physically work from Brisbane's back end and then the team who select him that they have to match the bid for, what do, what are the benefits that they're getting and, and what, what's the go with the points? Talk me through that. I'll try to talk you through it. So every pick up until pick 73 has a, a points value attached mm-hmm. to it. Number one being the highest at 3,000 points progressively gets smaller. And that's essentially so that the opposition teams can set the value for your father sons, for mm. your academies by bidding on the player. So for the, you know, the task at hand for Richmond is do we give, do we say Sam Lawler is our number one guy and we just pick him? Mm-hmm. If we bid on Levi Ashcroft, we're kind of inadvertently telling Sam Lawler that we, yeah. we don't rate him as yep. the number one pick. We rate Levi Ashcroft. Points. But yeah. Yeah. the payoff there is that we can make Brisbane pay the maximum amount of points, which means for them, what they have to do in a practical sense is use all of their draft picks that they have, mm. the points that are assigned to those picks. Like I yep. explained at the beginning, they go down. They've got to use them to match that point. So the higher the bid comes. So when you say use them though, like give them to no, they don't give them. They don't give them to Richmond. They just, they evaporate when their points value is used up on that pick. So say number one is 3000 points yep. and say number 20 is worth 900. So they've got pick 20, 21 and 22. They're just all going to, they've got to, <laughs> Yeah, mm. and those picks evaporate and then all of the other clubs come up a spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I write that. And I so write, does, yeah. that, does that then say hypothetically that would – that's essentially how we've got players left over going into like the mid-season draft, right? Like essentially. So like if players are coming down like that because spots have been evaporated and there's been what, 70 – how many people in the draft? 74? Did you say, like, or how, like how many nominate picks. for it? Or, yeah. or how many picks? Yeah, there's between often between 60, 75, somewhere okay. in, in that position. That that sort of uh, that's more complicated because that comes down to list sizes yeah, okay. and things and how many how many picks clubs actually take in the yeah. draft and then what they want to do with their list and all of that sort of stuff. So um, how the picks drop down, what that affects is say you got a Collingwood, mm-hmm. they're sitting with pick fifty two. <laughs> first pick. <laughs> Yeah, watch, watch out that it'll be some sort of Coleman medalist or yeah, something. But yeah, yeah. That's probably going to be like 46. Yep. Because those – like Brisbane and Gold Coast, who both have Academy and Father Sons in this draft, they're going to use several picks later in the draft to match bids and all of those – there'll be like eight picks will just drop off. Yeah, right. And Collingwood will just keep sneaking up the order gradually yeah, right. as those picks drop off. Is there like a little behind-the-scenes handshake, hey, like don't? We're not going to bid on him. So this is that, the thing. The thing and are they talking to each other saying, look after you? Or is it like, we hate you actually? The AFL yeah. actually bought in like some sort of a liaison person to sit in on the club's meetings this year. <laughs> so oh. that didn't happen. Because you remember the Nick Dacos year? Yep. The Giants had pick two that year. They didn't bid on Dacos. They bid on Sam Darcy. Mm. The year before, they'd actually done a trade for Collingwood's future first. So that was Collingwood's draft pick. And they think that in that 
trade in the mm-hmm. previous season. Mm-hmm. Oh. They'd actually had a... Yeah, we're not going to bid on Dacos. This is a pretty favourable deal. Sneaky bastards. Oh, and, so they bring someone in to sit in the meetings to see. So they brought someone, someone in this year Brilliant. to say, like, we don't want this stuff to happen. Like, obviously it still can because they can just do... Yeah. yeah. They just ring up and say, oh, yeah, by the way. <laughs> yeah. we, did, yeah. we didn't mention that in the meeting. I just think, go tall. I think you need to go tall as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, Brisbane and Richmond did a massive deal this season. So Brisbane traded pick 20, which was their first rounder, to the Tigers for a bunch of later picks that the Tigers had because this is what clubs do when they have academies. They don't want high draft picks because you're you're wasting it. So they get they get mm, five, six yeah. later picks that are worth right. more points than that first pick yeah. to use. So they've done the deal with the Tigers. So you'd, you'd think somewhere in there, um, Richmond got their nice first round pick. Mm. They offloaded a bunch of later picks to Brisbane and they went, just also don't, don't do that. Levi. Yeah. Well, there's also some cash up at hand here. Pick one gets a bit of uh, a bit of a kickback from NAB, I think. Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think it's like 20K. I, I, I tried 20K. to look at the CBA for that and I actually couldn't find it. I think it's 20. Yeah, I think it's outside. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, AFL payments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's not a brown paper bag. <laughs> Those yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that exact figure. Yeah, but, but yeah, that is a part of it too. So if if Richmond bid on Levi, they're essentially giving him twenty k as well. Yeah, but not the yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> What's this? All right, that's pick one. All right, pick okay. two. North. Now the big one has been. Well, I've heard. Are uh, they going to split it? Yeah, they, or does they, Richmond they make they a move to. for it. This is North driven. Yeah, they want to split it. They absolutely do. So there's three clubs in the line here. Tigers. So North go to six, Tigers come to two, and there's a, a late swap of picks as well. Saints, seven and eight. So one of those picks go to North yep. and, and they get hold of Always two. Sweating. and they, yeah. they get up for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other one, which seems to be gaining the most traction, seems the most likely, is Adelaide, who currently sit with pick four. They get up to two. North slip back to four. Um, and then the Crows give a future something like a future second that they would obtain from a West Coast Eagles. That would then facilitate North to get back into this year's draft potentially a little bit later on and they could get a, a second key position player. Yep. Okay. 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 So what do you think is happening? So what I think ha- is happening, I'm going to go with the Adelaide one on wow. this. Wow. I'm actually going to go with the Adelaide one on, and Adelaide get up to pick two and then they take the local boy, Sid Draper. Oh, no. I wanted him with the Blues so bad. Yep. Carl, yeah, right. Carlton, okay. are, Carlton are super keen on him as well. Yeah. And I think that's why Adelaide want this deal yeah. to happen Wax. because they think Carlton might take him at pick three. So they want to make it a sure thing. Yeah. Um, wow. And yeah, he's – Draper, again, I go back to that – I reference that archetypes thing I was talking about. Really nice between like an engine mm-hmm. um, and a, a strike. He's yeah. that really offensive player. Like he's got that burst from stoppage. Jet. He's got – ridiculous agility. Like sometimes it looks like he's actually skating. Like he gets on that lane, yeah, yeah, yeah. comes out of the stoppage. There was a huge contest, national championship style playing Vic Metro. And he had a big contest with Josh Smiley, who's a brute of a guy, big 194 bastard. centimeter mm. mid. And yeah. he just took him out. Yeah. Like wow. won the hard ball, spun out, burst forward. The thing, the, the reason, so Sid Draper, he's third on my rankings as far as from a ranking perspective of these midfielders. The thing, the reason I put him behind a no Sullivan or a Lawler is just the fact that he doesn't really have the forward game. So you're not going to be able to like plonk him forward. He's not going to take overhead marks. He's probably like, a, I'd call him like a supercharged Caleb Sarong. Okay. okay. So he's got more of a burst, more speed, but a similar type midfielder around that. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I was big on him. When I said yeah. I want Blues, I think he's True. a perfect if he gets the three or whatever it be. If, if there's bids in there to Carlton, I think he's that perfect just contrast what's in at the moment. But if Crow's obviously a massive on him, SA boy makes sense. Like they're big on SA talent yeah. always. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And they'd see compared to the other mids, they'd see him as a player they could retain, and yeah. he sort of suits what they need as yep. well. Yeah, both both Adelaide and Carlton probably need that sort of high mm. meters gained, really progressive midfielder. Yeah, and no bid here for Levi yet. Um, that actually was the spot that I was going to. Now, I'm sort of contradicting myself here because mm. Carlton and Brisbane did a deal as well. Yeah. But I think at some point someone's going to have to bid on, okay, cool. on Levi. I think it'll either be um, – so if Adelaide move up to two, mm-hmm. they would definitely do it or it'd be Carlton. Okay, at, so let's at, go to pick three. So I reckon this is where the bid might come. So I'll, I'll go I'll go pick two if Adelaide okay. come up, if they come up. All right. Yeah. Cool. So okay. pick, pick two. Yep. All right, uh, pick three. Pick three is Carlton, and given that Draper has gone to the Crows, we've got to go for No Sullivan okay. with this one. So I sort of like I reeled off before his yep. his traits. 
And I think I did a video a few weeks back on the Blues, their sort of midfield mix and how they've got Cripper, they've got Walsh. They're unreal at winning the footy, getting mm. first hands on the ball, but there's no one to just like to drive them forward. Oh, right? no, we're so slow. Yeah. Yeah, we're no, so slow. No <laughs> pace, no sort of lateral movement in there. Nah, we're Big yeah. turning circles. And the other one, you've got Hewitt, who's that defensive, yeah. defensively minded mid. So you need someone with speed, mm-hmm. someone that's going to take the game on. And Fino Sullivan just has that extra weapon of being yeah. able to hit the scoreboard. Those like Cripps and Walsh don't kick a lot of goals. No. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. Is he Walsh's cousin? Is what I heard. He is second cousin. Wow. Yeah. Keeping the family. I like that. That's a lock then. I like yeah. that. I, like I, that I think right. that's that's confused a lot of people too because a lot of people think that they're similar players. They're not at all. Yeah. They're, they're quite different. Okay. Different athletic types. Yeah. What do you, you heard? His hand or something? I'm seeing here. Hand. He's finger. had a, a lot of weird injuries this season, Fino Sullivan. So, um, he's had hip complaints. Um, he's had a hand injury through the national championships, and then he re-injured the hand getting cut open. Alarm just, bells or just bad, bad luck? I think bad luck. Yeah. I mean, there's always a higher risk with these more explosive athletic types. Mm. Yeah, there, there's some risk. And, and same with Lawler. He's had a big hamstring injury yeah. this season as well. But um, I think you've got to like you've got to go for the high upside mm. that they, they have as well. So yeah. you can't really okay. just – you've got to back in the fact that when they get to the AFL level, the medical team is going to be better. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. going to be able to look after them too, I think. Okay, so Levi's off the board. Am I right now? Levi's gone. Okay, so let's go back to Le- – how good is he? Levi? Is he, yeah, is he like next level? Like he's, crazy? he's brilliant. Um, the, the term that I've used to describe Levi Ashcroft this season is ruthlessly efficient. Yeah. And I don't want to knock him in any way by this, but he's, he's not the most exciting player. Mm-hmm. He's just everywhere. Like he's an unbelievable runner. He gets so much footy on the transition. I think the, the Will comparison like to, to give you a look at someone that plays a bit like him. Mm. He's similar to Will, but he's probably, he wins a little bit less contested footy and gets mm. a little bit more on the outside. So he's a little bit of a, a better runner and he does hit the scoreboard a bit mm. more because he's sort of running running heavily forward. He's got great stoppage craft. Like he's probably the best player as far as talking about that handballing, that creative handballing. Like he's got gears to it. Yeah. How he can just change the speed, change the direction handball out the back of his head, yeah. all of that stuff. I had a video clip of him earlier in the season and he was sort of bent over going down to pick up this loose ball off balance almost in head. the air and just the velocity that he got yeah. on the handball to release mm. someone running through. Um, and that just shows the work that he's put into those like really fine features mm. of his game. But you probably don't – like he's not a, a super exciting pick, but someone that for like the lines, they're just getting him for – Man. Like not for nothing, but no. they, you know, they they just want a premiership and yeah. they get a player of that caliber. Yeah. Well, it comes from a family winners. That's all he knows. Yeah. He played yeah. one VFL game, had thirty five touches in the goal. I was like, that's enough for me, boys. I'll play the real level now. Yeah, like yeah, he's, yeah. For those like you said, like I know a little bit about him, but not like what he's. Uh, from what I'm hearing, he's not going to just jump out of you on the screen, but he'll get a lot of the footy. Hundred percent. And yep. like, yeah, there's something almost about the winning side of it that's a bit in, intangible because he wins everything. That's something you need. You need to bring in winners. I reckon. Yeah. I'm big on bringing in winners. So that's I like that. Okay, so he's off. So pick four, can't we've done now. Back to pick five. Who has pick five now? Crows so that is going up. to be North with the swap with the Crows, mm-hmm. and they're going to take the guy that they've just been hot on for pretty much the best part of the back end of this season, which is Alex Tyroo. The biggest bolter really in this draft, given the fact that he wasn't even representing Vic Country. He wasn't even going to be yeah, in that side wow. at the beginning of the year. He's the youngest player in the draft. Yeah. So I, I like that too. I like that element of a younger player that yeah. may have been overlooked because of he was a bit younger and a little bit less developed. He's got massive athleticism as a – uh, what would you call him? Like a medium tall defender. Yeah. He's about 194, plays taller. People have compared him to James Sicily. He's like, he's significantly taller than Sicily. I think Sicily is 188. Mm. Um, so more in that medium type. I'd say Tyroo's closer to a key position player. Think I'd say Noah Bolter. Okay. Someone like that. Mm-hmm. And Tyroo has, he's gone forward at different points this season, played as a key position forward. By the last few rounds of the season, he was dominating, mm. playing forward, playing back, even playing in the midfield a little bit yeah. as well. What's so his nickname? Viking. Yeah, the Flying Viking because he's got <laughs> Swedish and Finnish <laughs> oh, heritage. I'll tell you what, yeah. Swedes, they don't fuck around the Swedes. No, they're, 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 you've, they're, you've, they're, you I've always, always said, said that, that too. Yeah. I've always said that. Yeah. I mean, I saw some of his stuff that he just lives on shoulders. Yeah. Like he's just uh, all pack marks or floating across. Yeah, like and big. he backed that up in the combine with some like ridiculous vertical leaping okay. and, and stuff like that. He's got good pace. About three seconds for a 20 meter for a big man. So if he goes to north, where is he playing forward or back? 
He's playing back. Him, he, he like play. you've, yeah, you got to play him back. Um, sit alongside a, a Combin. Yep. I think he'll take some time. Like he's a raw prospect. He's a bit of a reach, a hundred percent for North at this pick. But there's enough interest and and teams. The thing for North that's tricky is there's a lot of teams in this top end that have double picks, and teams like Melbourne, St Kilda, who have those back to back picks, they they're, they're going to want to take a guy like this alongside a midfielder. Yeah. So North don't have a lot of choice to be able to fall back. Yeah, much sure. much further than yep. this and. Okay. I just think with the amount of midfielders that they've brought in over the last five years being so bad for that long, they've got to take a bit they're of They're stacked. A, yeah, yeah. They're, sta- they're stacked in the midfield. Like you, Everyone that they've drafted recently, McKercher, even Dersma's really supposed to be a big-bodied mid. Yeah, that was turning into mid. <laughs> just like everyone. Yeah, yeah. Turning yeah. Into yeah. Was, yeah Jack yeah. Darling, yeah, midfield, I think, this <laughs> midfield, year. Midfield, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, then. Uh, it takes us to pick uh, six. Pick six, which is uh, originally pick five. Um, which is Melbourne. Yeah. Oh, now this is a club that needs to... <laughs> do, I mean, need to we need to do something here. A lot of talk around Melbourne. Been a shit show for the last four years. So I'm going to quickly just Ooh. bid. Quick bid. Oh, bidding. Yeah. Leo Lombard. Oh, ah. Uh, Hector's son. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, so coming. Lombard, he's wicked. And I think he's so slept on in this draft because he's just going to Gold Coast. So yep. no, one, no one really cares about him. His combine was absolutely outrageous. Like it's 6.35 for the 2K time trial. So he's pushing that 6.30 mark, which is really good for yep. endurance. 2.85 second 20 meter sprint. That's lightning. Absolutely lightning. Absolutely lightning. Oh, like that's, that's quick. That's, Sorry, that's, that's quick. quick. Yeah. No, that's visualizing that's, that. That's, that's quick. Yeah. And he, he plays like it too. Like he bursts out of stoppages, takes yep. people on. Yep. He's been playing VFL for like the last two years. He was in a premiership with the Gold Coast when he was 16. S- Whoa. At VFL level, yeah. kicking goals, playing as a, a bit of a small forward, playing through the midfield. Not dissimilar to a Jake Rogers from the 2023 yep. draft um, with that burst, but I think Lombard's even got more tricks. Won the Lark medal at the national championships, mm-hmm. just only about 178. So he's really small, yeah. really just rotund and just at it. He's built like a big shit house. Like he's ready yeah. to go now. Yeah, his okay. dad's UFC fighter. He, he plays like his dad. He <laughs> just throws his weight around physical. Yeah. Like I like him a lot. Yeah. He's, he's like the – his highlights are my favourite, just yeah, the stuff and, I saw. And I think because he's been going to the Gold Coast, people have just gone, yeah, whatever, like he's Sky. about 10th. But he's he's good. Like he's a yeah. high-end midfielder. And the fact that he can run like that puts him up. Okay. He's a good football too. Yeah. So then we've got Melbourne um, with their first selection. So I've gone back and forwards on this depending on what happens up the board because they're, they're very linked to Harvey Langford, another big-bodied mid. But I think – Given what's transpired ahead, they're going to take Jagger Smith. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, he is the the ball mule Jagger. Mm-hmm. Just if you've ever seen, like, think about the best loose ball players at stoppage. The guys that just get their hands on the footy when it's in contest. Nick Dacos is probably one of the best at it. Gary Ablett Jr. He's that good at that phase of the game. Wow! Just finding the football. Big vacuum in there. Absolute vacuum. Wow! The and vac has. Um, it's it's quite unreal to watch him how he can get himself out of traffic. Just a lot of like retreating, evasive stuff to get away from the crowd. And yep. then he's pretty much handballing. So he's a high handball player, not yeah. a lot of penetration forward. He's got those sort of 30 to 35 meter kicks that sort of sit up a little bit. Okay. So there's not that real oomph yep. in the game. But as far as the stop, if you want someone to come in and win- get you ha- like hands on the ball and then just be a creative to – you know, release the runners off mm-hmm. halfback, release the wingers, those sorts of players. Yep. He's absolutely perfect. Yep. Okay. Reminds me a lot of Zach Butters. Yes. A yeah. little bit less penetration. It's good by you. What, yeah. what note do you read then? <laughs> he's, he's Googling. Because <laughs> um, Melbourne's very interesting. I think Melbourne fans and people that we know who go for Melbourne are dying saying, please, please just take a forward. To, yes. We need someone, a, a, you know, a developing forward, someone with a big yep. body up there. That's the biggest hole they've had. Uh, but this also is hard because – the club is a bit of a shit show at the moment inside the four walls. You've got CEOs and presidents leaving. Now they've got the track and all the stuff. It's also, well, is this pick a thing where they go, we kind of need insurance for maybe yeah. track and all of the leaving? Like, and it's Jagger such a weird would, time for them. It's weird, yeah. It's weird because they've got all of that stuff going on, but then they find themselves off not an absolutely disastrous season on the field. They find themselves with two picks inside the top 10 in a really strong draft. Yeah. So what do you do with that? Do you take – like, do you take needs because mm. you've been challenging for premierships or do you go – I just think with if Jagger's on the board, 
even though he's not maybe exactly what they want, mm. they probably still have to take him as just the best available and have a look at what this midfield's going to look like post Oliver, yeah. post Petrarca, yeah. mm-hmm. when it's got your Rivers, uh, it's got your Windsor yeah. in there as well. I think uh, that's the big thing that probably we didn't pay enough respect to is how many young players they played and how many young good players they have, given how much shit was happening inside that yeah. football club. And, you kind of yeah. forgot, like, yeah. oh, these kids are good. Yeah, yeah 100%. And, and they've drafted really, um, like, smartly in the last few years. Like, what they did last year, they jumped up. They gave away some late picks to jump up slightly in the first round to take Windsor and then to take Thulstrup yep. as well. So they've gone – they've definitely gone with the draft. We want to get as high as we possibly can to take the best – Fair enough. Available yep. talent or even a specific player that they want that they okay. think is high end. Cool. Okay. Well done, Melbourne. Love that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. All right. Who's up next now? Pick. So Richmond, they're going to take the big bodied mid here, Josh Smiley. They're the club that has the most links to him inside this top 10. He's like, if you go back to early parts of the season, he was the clear number one. People thought that he was just going to elevate his game as the season went on. Yeah. Had a bit of a quiet national championships. And when he has sort of stepped up to that next level, he's probably looked a little bit, a um, little bit more cumbersome, a little bit more slow mm-hmm. as a bigger bodied midfielder than when he's been dominating at the talent league. Cause he's just so much bigger and stronger. Genuine than- man child. Yeah, like, yeah. Cause he was the clear number one. I swear 18 months ago, like he came yes. out as like, no, like I'm the number one. And he was just, like built, like he's ready to go. He's yeah, hundred percent. And he gets like everyone that's a huge mid gets compared to like Bont and and Cripps. Crip. I think he's more of a Tom Green, okay, as as a mid. So mm-hmm. he's not slow, um, but he's not. He doesn't have that super speed that makes him really explosive. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like out of the center stop. Yep. So I don't see him as a guy that gets out the front. I see him as a guy that gets his hands on the ball. He uses his body really nicely to block players. And then he can use his hands to get out. He is pretty nice with his foot skills. Mm-hmm. Maybe like, if you imagine someone like a David Mundy yep. from years gone by, yep, yep. pretty nice, like can, can actually roll off the half back line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty nice. It's just how many of those guys that are big bodied mids go on to be Bont Crips? Like it's- yeah, it's- Well, is he one of those ones that we said before we started? Like he's one of those ones in the draft where he's closer to his ceiling, you think? Like we kind of seen- He'll get better, obviously, as you will playing AFL, but he's kind of well, – he is what he is already. 100%. And, like, he's got size on his side mm. in the sense that clubs will look at that and go, okay, you know, he's not not a 180-centimetre small no. mid that's going to look – like, we can plunk him in that midfield. But I, I maybe don't see the the elevation that he can go on mm. to be, like, one of the absolute game-breaking players. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that's that's Richmond's second pick. So yep. they'll get – they'll go Lawler at one, Smiley at six, six. there. Six, yeah. I reckon they'd be sniffing around Jagger if he was available, but I've mm-hmm. got Melbourne taking him at five. Okay, okay. Um, uh, then we go to the Saints. Yeah, pick eight. Pick eight. Yep. Um, they will have a bid on Isaac Kako here, mm-hmm. the Essendon NGA product. The yep. rules actually just changed with that, that NGA system too, so Essendon could match a bid in the first round this season, and that's perfect for them because – I don't know if I've ever seen an academy or a father-son bid be just the perfect player for a team straight away for, yeah. their, for a needs mm. base. That's exactly yeah. the sort of player that they would have wanted if they were just in an open draft anyway. So A crafty small forward. Crafty small forward, great with ball in hand, hits the scoreboard regularly and just impacts the game. And I think what they'll want him to do is to come in and be that defensive mid, just not let the ball spit out like it has yep. okay. so, so regularly in recent seasons. Yep. Okay. So right. that'll be the Saints. That's eight. Then you've got uh, Melbourne at nine here. Oh, yeah. So the, the Saints will pick, though. That was their bid. Yep. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, it was their bid. So that was, the, that was their bid. Nine. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So they will select. And this is where I'm, I'm zagging a little bit from the maybe the convention. Most people would be thinking someone like a Harvey Langford comes into the picture here. I think the Saints are going to go for Bo Allen. The West Australian. Okay. Big bow. Big bow. Big wraps on bow. So I line those three big bodied mids up that are in this top 10 conversation. Smiley, Langford, Allen. Yeah. Langford is probably highest on the footy IQ, footy skill side. Mm -hmm. Smiley second. Yeah. Allen third. But then you go athleticism and it completely flips. Allen, sub three second 20, rapid, rapid pace. And they're all 190 plus. Yeah. These guys. Um, Aerial ability, he was top five in the, the vertical jumping at the, um, yep. at the combine as well. He's played senior footy with Peel. He was in a premiership win for them earlier in the season. Has floated off halfback, gone into the midfield. He looks a little bit raw, yep. but when he gets a run at the footy, he's got that burst, he's got that explosion, and he can play forward as well. 
So right. you've got, I think from a, an upside point of view and projecting mm -hmm. him, I think he's got the highest upside of all three of those big body mids. So I think the Saints and Ross Lyon, we know he, like, he loves those running players. Yeah. The players mm -hmm. that can run, um, have speed. So I think they're going to take a risk and they've been heavily linked to him as well. Yeah, right. I think West Coast be kicking themselves because the talk was keep pick three and maybe get Bo just because WA product and they wanted him. But then they've got, see here, West Coast did have 12 to start the draft. So he might get a 12 or you don't think he will in this mock, obviously. He doesn't get a 12. Bo might Bo. get to 12. Do you reckon he slides out? Or you I think don't Saints think so because him? I don't think he'd get past Melbourne yep. at, sure. at nine. Okay. I think Saints are hot. I think the Ds are hot too. Yeah. So then with the second pick, I think St Kilda are going to be targeting mids mm. across the board with these two picks. I think the next one that they go for, another brilliant runner, not as much on the speed end, more on the endurance end, but Xavier Lindsay, yep. player from the Gippsland Power. Yep. Um, he was fantastic in the national champs, like a big ball winner, a beautiful ball user. He was in the academy team mm. that's put together the best players basically from the draft you go into. He, he rolled across halfback, so he's a beautiful user of the footy. Yeah. Can go inside as well, but I think he's another player that the Saints, again, if you look at their draft history, players like Darcy Wilson, they love those enduro bunny, mm -hmm. you know, high intensity runners, and that's exactly what Xavier Lindsay is. A smaller body than Bo Allen, so there's some complimentary yep. stuff going on there. Yep. I think they'd be looking at building that midfield with a, a Philippou, yeah. an Allen, and a Xavier Lindsay long term, and then you got your Steels and your McCrae's just yeah. doing a bit of work. He's got a bit of um, pendles about him, I reckon. Xavier, yeah. yeah, yeah, really good, really nice movement. <laughs> He's just picking <laughs> off notes over there. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ollie. But yeah. He, he, yeah, he does. yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I I liken him a little bit to Colby McKercher. Ah, nice from yeah, from last yeah, yeah. year. A little bit less pace, mm -hmm. but yep. yeah, similar rolls off the halfback. Good user. Yeah, nice good running ability. So I think that's what the Saints do back to back okay. mm -hmm. um, with those selections. And then they get a nice mix in there. D's then would be next. Yep. Um, they're pretty hot on Alex Tyru, but given the quality of this player that's still on the board, and we talked about that need for a forward, I mm -hmm. think they'll take Harvey Langford, okay. who is okay. a midfielder, a big bodied midfielder. It's called mids again. Mids again. But this guy can roll across as a bit of a third toll. In the forward line, he can be a, a major marking target. I talked about him when I compared him to Smiley and to Allen. His main weakness is he's very slow. Okay. Like he's, ve yeah, quite Flutter. quite mm -hmm. slow. Yeah. Okay. Um, can run like can from an endurance perspective. You know, can cover the ground. He's a really smart player, so he gets yep. into really yeah. nice positions, runs the patterns and stuff like that. But he's probably a little bit less athletically gifted than some of those other mids. And that's mm -hmm. why I see him ultimately sliding a little bit. But I think he's probably too good for the Ds to pass up here. So they go with Jagger with the earlier pick mm. and then Harvey with this one. It's so again. Big, big bodied yeah. and yeah. then smaller, yeah. Again, they've already got those two, but so it must True. be a, it's a good cover in case something goes wrong. I think the big one here is, you know, maybe D's fans in the draft, Harry Armstrong. Yeah. Would he be bit. one where they go, well, now we'll listen to you and say, yeah, okay, we'll go after a forward. Yeah, like, Harry Armstrong's a really interesting one for me. I think when you put him up, when you try to do the best in class thing mm -hmm. of that type of forward, I probably don't see him as, like you're comparing to players like, like a Cadman, <laughs> someone like that that he's a little bit similar to. Yeah. He, he plays a lot deeper. Like he only touches the footy seven, eight times a game. Yeah. Um, he doesn't get high up the field. So he's really, you're relying on him to be that deep forward. Yep. He's a good contested mark, but he's a one dimensional forward in the sense that he doesn't, he doesn't give you that athleticism to get up the ground. So maybe he can develop that into his game. There are a couple of, and these are just rumours, but like a couple of things with clubs have been a little bit scared off with his character as well Ooh, and, and had him sliding talking. sliding a little bit. Um, can't sort of confirm any of that. But no, no. Just, hey, mate, we love we making shit up. We <laughs> <can>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, so, yeah, no, that's a real thing. That is a real thing in draft where 100%. character comes in. And I, I don't really, when I rank players, I don't judge, I don't judge them on that yeah. because I don't know them. No, but um, it's yeah, it's a thing. It that, comes in for sure. Yeah, into the the culture and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, I I think if those players that w w were available for the D's, that's that's for me the way that they would go. Okay, so just so I'm confirming here, that's our top ten done. Yep. Then it would be so uh, Lawler, Draper, O'Sullivan, um, the Viking, Jagger Smith, Josh Smiley, Carco, Bo Allen, um, Xavier, yep, and then Harry Armstrong. 
Uh, no, Harvey Langford. Harvey, Harvey Langford, Langford, sorry. Harvey Langford. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, what under those He's guys? a bit similar to sort of like a, I don't know. Guess okay, no, like you can stop doing that. Like a Jordan, Jordan, Dawson, Jordan no, 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 Dawson or something no, no, like no. that? No, no, no. So that yeah. would give then yeah. Richmond a pick 11. <laughs> Richmond back on the board here. Back at, on the board here. At pick 11. At pick 11. So I'm just going to check. check go for notes. it. No, no, go. Checks notes. Um, yeah, okay. So I think the Tigers here, given that they've gone, they've gone two mids so far. Uh, Lawler at one, Smiley at six. I think then they bring in a bit of a running defender. And this is probably a talent move. I think the Tigers' back line is pretty pretty sorted yep. at the moment. But obviously, it's ageing still. So when they're they going to want to get players through there at some point, yep. I think they go for Toby Trevalier okay. with okay. one of these two back-to-back picks. What do we know about I, Toby? I don't think they take any key position players. Toby's, a again, wonderful runner, high-intensity runner off the back half of the ground. But he's... 187, 188 centimetres around mm. that mark. Can intercept the footy. Something, what would you call him? He's, he's very similar to a young Will Day. Okay. So halfback flanker, running defender mm-hmm. that has aerial ability, but has that projection that you could run him through the midfield in the future. Like he's got the skills at ground level yep. and the athleticism to be able to do that. Has played a little bit of midfield for the Pioneers. Hasn't dominated, but like he finds the footy. Okay. Is this one of those ones where Richmond can say, let's just have a swing here? Oh, I think I think it so. Is one I, of those think, I think they can do sort of, but okay. he's he's there, he's around the mark on talent. And yep. I think teams I reckon even a, a D's at nine will have a think about okay. Trevalier for sure. Yeah. What do you think about Trevalier over there? Well, I'm annoyed actually because I actually thought I agreed. I hate yeah, <laughs> I, I will day very much so. Yeah. 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 He spent a lot of time with uh, like Bendigo Pioneers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's just probably Pierce, Juju Club, and yeah. Sandhurst. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Like your was, knowledge was is a standing roof. captain too for yeah. Vic, Vic Country, so mm-hmm. he's got the leadership. Yeah. Okay. Average like what was it like twenty one? Yeah. You're yeah. overselling it now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah sounds about right. Finds the footy. Okay. Um, he's he's skinny, like very yeah. skinny. So oh, needs to eat some dumbbells. Needs get to get in the gym. Yeah. Get in yeah, the gym. Right. Again, similar. Will day build. Yeah. Yeah. Like that same that real skinny, but it's sort of skinny strong. Yeah, 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 they, don't, they won't ever fill out and be huge. They'll just get strong, like yes. internally. You won't see it, okay? Yes. But they'll get strong. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and, and I guess with the outgoings there for Richmond too, like players like Rioli leaving off the halfback yeah. line, it does you know make sense fulfill that a bit. Okay. Then this is the more speculative one. So I think here they go for Taj Hotton, and Taj Hotton's been injured for most of the season. So he's played probably five games of footy if you include school. Yeah, and the coach. So is there back to back pick here? Yeah, back to back. Yeah. So this is, I think, where they really get into the spectrum. five games. That's Jeez, not a yeah, lot. What did he do? Nah. His knee. Yeah, did his wow. knee. Um, playing for uh, uh, Halebury, um, at training, I think it was five games he played. Yeah, something like that. Not not many. Only three in the talent league. Wow. But I'm I'm like no word of a lie. Like he was in the games that he did play. Like yeah. he was wicked. Okay. Like, unbelievable. Yeah. His movement. Um, he's got outrageous agility, outrageous speed. He's got marking ability, that perfect sort of forward of center hybrid yeah. player. Yep. Shea Bolton, Isaac Rankin. Yep. Yep. Think about players like that, like more lightly built. Yeah. Yep. Not like a Lawler. I talk about like a Dusty Martin. Yep. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, just moves so well. Like he was one of the, I was so disappointed when he went down mm. just because I couldn't watch him play. Yeah. yeah. So, so fun to watch. So creative. Yeah. Kicked, had 32 and kicked four. Oh, in the so game he's, that I he's saw just it. legit. He's good. Like he was taking the piss. I'd see here, 93 centimetre vertical leap. Yes. Yeah. That's just a metre off the ground pretty much. Yeah. When he gets a run at it. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Okay. So five games, but that's enough for- Yeah. And, and I think if, if you went back to that moment, like if you were doing the draft after those five games, like you'd, he'd be top five. Okay. Okay. Sure. So he's even at, on some level, it's he's sliding. Yeah. But I think because there's such a small sample size of data, teams- like generally will he'll slide even more than this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Richmond have that ability to take him because mm. of the Okay. The banking of picks. All right. And then we get to pick thirteen West Coast where they pretty much self imploded their own draft. Mm. Which a lot of people think. Well, oh, it should have been think, three and now they're thirteen. I think it was outrageous. Yeah. What, wild. They, what they did. They wanted to ride over there. We yeah, get feedback yeah. heavily from the West and mm. they're like, what have we done? Yeah. The whole season's already over. And now they're gonna pick thirteen. Pick thirteen. Well pick three could have been someone to go on side like Harley partner in crime. Harley partner in crime. Yeah, they'd have two, potentially two of the best midfielders, young midfielders in the comp. <laughs> and what's they doing? I don't know. Like I, I honestly don't know. And like Liam Bates, like 
He's such Liam Baker's like the perfect player if you were about to win a premiership. Yeah. yeah. Bring him in. But <laughs> yeah. I think we can all agree. Yeah. That's not, yeah. Okay, yeah. so pick thirteen. What do they do with pick thirteen? So they're in a, a, a weird spot. I think the West Coast Eagles with their the mids that they've drafted recently. So they've they've gone Reed in the mm. most recent draft. The year before that, they went Jinby and Hewitt. Yep. Again, like very powerful type players and players that don't find the footy. Their their mm. profile from a statistical point of view is a mess. Like they just can't win the football. Yeah. And when they do get their hands on the ball, they can't control it. Oh yeah, no, they stink at the moment. They they just yeah, yeah they stink. So they yeah. need some players that can come in, mm. find the footy at stoppage, actually create a little bit, control the ball. Yeah. So I think, and again, sliding in this draft from that top view is Murphy Reed. Okay. I think nice. they're going to take yeah. the Sandringham Dragon here. He He's someone that can find the footy. He's really creative. Again, you talk about fun players to watch. Mm. He reminds me a little bit of Harry Sheasel. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No athleticism, but he just sort of runs around. Bring like his own footy. He looked to me like a guy who give you 25 every game. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. just get the ball for you. And, and kick the goal. The, the knocks and the worries about him are athletic. So like no speed, okay. no jump, like no overhead game. So yeah. – a lot's got to go right in his IQ sense. Yeah. But people have compared him, you know, still side bottom. Pendlebury, he's got that ability to slow a the Sam game. A Sam Mitchell type? Yes. Kind of, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That'd be another one. Can, you know those players that can just make everything look... Yeah. yeah in, a, good. in a chaotic yeah. environment at the yeah. stoppages. S- slows time down a little bit. Yeah. yeah Basketball yeah. background. Um, yeah. And he won <laughs> national champs. So going up a level at national champs, he won the, the BNF or what do you call it? The the best player for Vic Metro. Yeah. Yep. Forget the name of that award. But yep. um, yeah, so I think type wise, and he he has been talked about in that top. I think Toomey had him at six okay. on his ranking. So he's rated by people mm. in the industry for sure. So I think West Coast at 12 would take Murphy Reed. Okay. It takes us to Port. Port have some holes to fill. Port do have some holes to fill. I think they lack tons of quality in the small forward ranks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think... If Harry Armstrong is still on the board, the Charlie Dixon replacement is there. Yep. You're deep forward. You're contested marking forward. Um, I just think he's sort of perfect for them to put there. Someone that can – I think he's a forward that can come in and have a, a decent amount of impact early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's the way Paul would go. Just okay. To, yeah, reinvigorate that forward line. Yeah, yeah. right. So not, nothing to place Dan Houston, just find someone internally. I think so. Okay. I think so. I mean, they've got guys like what, Farrell. Yep. I yeah. think of who that Farrell. other one is that I, I think will, will slot in there. That was the most obvious one. Yeah. yeah. Pretty um, much, yeah. And I, I wanted to take take a small forward for them too, but they have like they've drafted a lot of small forwards recently. So do they do they back them in? Are they not good enough? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Which and takes us then to Frio. Frio. Fremantle. And I, I'm as a North fan, I'm so jealous that another team gets to draft this guy because he's one of my favourite players in the draft. Joe Berry, have you, are you familiar? No, not no, not familiar with this game. Right. I, I, Ollie, you'd be pretty familiar, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I guess like a Dylan Moore comparison yes. comes to mind. Correct. Like, what website are you on? He's not like, he's not massive. He'd be like, what, 180, <laughs> 80, 81? Yeah. How yeah. do you know? Mate, he's a Murray, Murray Bush Ranger. You wouldn't Tell have me. his like his date of birth, would you, by any chance? <laughs> Just <laughs> on top of your head? No, no, no. But no, he spent a lot of time around. But Murray Bush Ranger, Wangaratta, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and a, another one of those fast developers. Yep. So um, I don't think he was even in the Bush Rangers team as a bottom major no which okay. is it's quite rare so <laughs> i can tell you it wasn't, it wasn't that's it. yeah <laughs> yeah i think i've read that too yeah, yeah um yeah so murray bush ranger like just a, a pesky little small forward yeah um when the ball hits the ground he's just he's there like he's yep. there he's creating kicking goals hitting the scoreboard and i think his big like advantage and when we talked about Kako as that sort of small forward earlier in the mm-hmm. top 10, Barry's got the aerial game. So he's that little aerial hybrid. Think about Jamie Elliott. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who's the other one for Collingwood? Hill. Hill. Yeah. 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 Those types of players that can play in the air as well and then just be really dangerous. Barry's ran through the midfield and like picked up 30 touches too. Mm. Yeah, right. In games. So he's like, yeah, he's fast. He's agile. He's mm-hmm. just got everything. And the modern, modern, like teams are starting to draft these players really highly now. Like, I don't think they were 10 years ago. Mm. But what I think the Giants have sort of set the standard there, taking these smaller forwards, Hawthorne, with Bedford what they did with... Comes to mind. Like a Bedford? Yeah. Yeah, yep. even that type of player. Yep. Um, yeah, the Giants, like uh, Phoenix Gothard, they took... Yep. Um, who's the helmet guy? I forget his name. Uh, there was a lot to get around the shin boaters, <laughs> but they're up there. Um, uh, Foo for Giants. Yeah. Not helmet Harvey guy. Thomas. He's another oh, one. Oh, um, 
Darcy Jones. Yep. 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 So small forwards are in vogue. Those guys yeah. can win contest four to the ball. Like I think teams are even neglecting key position players more than ever. Yeah. Um, someone that can compete in the air and then bring those other players into the game. You get it in quickly. Fair enough, yeah. And they just pounce on Fair it. They're pretty good all over the field, though. It's yes. one of those ones where it's like they don't have a glaring hole. No. Forward, no. they're good. Back, they're good. Mid, they're really good. It's just like if bringing pace. I think pace, yeah. regardless, yeah. kills, as the saying goes, but bringing pace. Yeah, yeah. And if you do look at those small forwards, so they brought in Bolton, which massively helps. Mm-hmm. Oh, going to be so quick. But he can roll <laughs> through the midfield a bit as well. Then they've got like their forwards are like Swakowski, uh, Bailey Banfield, like not the most quality. No. So bringing in a player like Barry, like ball in hand, so yeah. Just a, yeah, a lot, a lot better. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, Freya going to be an absolute pop oh, next year. They're a wagon. Then we cut. Yeah. yeah, they're a wagon. Um, take us to back to back picks from the Giants here. Giants back to back picks. I think they take Job Shanahan, big key position forward here. Just develop him. Not a need, but he's he's from New South Wales, um, and and from the country, sort of mm. down on the border there somewhere. Yep. New South Wales, Victoria. So I think they'll take him. Oh, you'll know. Don't stress. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. I actually don't have anything to say. I'm trying to- <laughs> I know that he's kicked 11 goals in the three VFL games for Essendon's VFL side. Okay. So that's – um, that. I'm, just, yeah. big, I'm yep. just personally big on kids playing against men. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. It's, for me, it does something like just the physicality. Not The, the pace is different yep. because we said there's a massive gap between the VFL, but I've always just been big on like getting thrown around or throwing your weight around against men. 100%. And he's done that. 100%. Because some players do just shrink a little bit, don't they? It's intimidating. Yeah. Like your first game against a man is like, whoa. But here yeah. clearly yeah. is yeah. just... I think that's a good point too. And it's probably something that recruiters look at in that how not necessarily how you go from a numbers point nah. of view, but how you take it. 100%. How you bounce back, how you get, yeah. how you take getting, you know, shoved around. I think it's huge. Yeah. I've always been big on it. Yeah. So Job, um, yeah, dominated at VFL for the Bombers. I think the Giants take him... Again, not a need, but just someone that is from New South Wales, kind of fits what they're trying to do. Yeah. He's a yeah, good competitive player. Yeah. And then the Giants that, just stay in their home sorry, the Giants just stay in their home ground. Do they ever draft out of like I don't remember them ever plick pucking plucking like a I'll tell you what they do. Yeah. They draft like they, they still draft heavily out of Victoria, but okay. only the country zone. They mm. rarely take a player from Vic Metro. Oh really? Yes. Why's that? Just some. Um, they just see the Vic Metro players as more likely to want to go home. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. The, yeah. The country, I think most teams have that as a bit of a philosophy. Yeah. But yeah, them, if you go back and look at their history, it's yeah. really rare that they'll take a, a Metro player unless like the talent level is just too, yeah. too high. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Smart then. Makes sense. Yeah. I think I do remember Joe. Oh, I do. Because yeah? you went out of that game, didn't you? Yeah. And he's. <laughs> I mean, his ability to take a set shot, but also go crashing back with the flight. It's actually very Nick Raybold esque. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah, just people have said as that. much info as he can late here when the pick comes up. So, what about. So, we're up to pick. My now I'm confused. Pick 16. Uh, Giants back to back. Giants back to back. Joe with the first one. And. So, another- can I just ask what Ollie would do here? Yeah, what would you do? Uh, well, given where they're at, I reckon I just I wouldn't split them. I'd go back to back. You go back to back. Yeah, <laughs> but like a name, got any names in here or not yet? Uh, yeah, I'd see. I'd see I mean, obviously, Joe Barry's off the board. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think by by then, honestly, like the, the like a tall forward, like a jaunty f- uh, foul fall. No, nah, I would say a bit later for him. Well, would you take two key key forwards in a row? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I probably would think. Well, if that's the case, then like you could even look smaller, like a ja- like a Jasper. Um, Why are you looking Alga. at your screen so much? Oh, because I've made my own notes. You're copying off mine. So yeah. I've got like a ja- ja- like a Jasper Alga. Yeah, where's uh, he from? Uh, Warrigal. Uh, oh, it's like yeah, like uh, Oakley Chargers, Warrigal, Gippsland. Yeah, Warrigal. Um, yeah, yeah. Warrigal. It's like a bit sort of Toby Green like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's a genius. As, do you echo that or not? Really? Uh, it's okay. To say so no. what? Uh, similar path I've got. Mm. So Jasper Olga, yeah. he'll be definitely one that they look at. I've got them going though a different small forward. Uh, we Ollie trust Han- you more. Do you? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, Ollie, yes. <laughs> uh, Ollie Hannaford. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. And there's so many teams that are hot on this guy. And he's he's probably the first one that comes into the draft that I think his, his biggest weapon is his defensive game. He's tackling as a small forward. He's re- like ferocious pressure. He yeah. does have the athleticism to back that up though. Yep. So he's he's quick, powerful, yep. um, and, and has kicked bags in the last part of this season, kicked a bag of five and a bag of six okay. in the, towards the Coates Talent League finals for GWV. So high impact, small forward, medium type player around the 180 centimeter yep. mark. Yep. I absolutely, like, I love him. 
Okay. I absolutely love him. You're and right. I hope he does go this high. I've got him potentially going to the Bulldogs okay. with, well, with the next pick as well if the Giants went a different way. But I've got him here okay. to the Giants. Well, we, yeah. One thing we didn't discuss with these two Giants picks is that possibility that they would split it with the Saints. That's still an option. Yeah. Yep. I think it's less likely because I don't think the Giants are up for it. I think the Saints are more up for it, similar to that North Melbourne deal. Yeah. Um, but it's probably just worth mentioning. So Saints split a seven or an eight for 15, six, or 15 16. Yeah, or even a 15 and 21. So that would give the Saints yeah. eight, 15, 16, or seven, 15, 16. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think, I'd be stoked with that. Yeah. And I think that's what the Saints want to do. It's more about the Giants... And again, yeah. that comes into that deep draft conversation. Yeah. Teams don't want to go up the board to lose a pick. Okay. Yeah, right. Or well, taste the dogs then. So you think dogs could also move you if they don't go after Holly? Yes. Holly? So the dogs. Well, their dogs are just stacked with giants. Yeah. Like they're so Land tall. They're so big. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So they need probably small forwards yeah. and they need players that probably starting to run through the midfield because their midfield is aging. Bond, yeah, we get old Trelaw, shit now. Yeah. yeah. Libba. I mean, they've yep. got they brought in Sanders. Yeah. Um, yep. So I think they're going to go here for what Jesse Detoli. Another mm. one of those similar to Ollie Hannaford, like similar type players. Probably someone that doesn't quite have the the same athleticism mm -hmm. as Ollie Hannaford. So he's not going to be closing you down quite as quickly, quite as ferociously, but he's probably a better ball in hand player. Yeah. And someone that can also run through the midfield. This guy has a bit of personality to him as well, doesn't I he? I love him. Is he Prince yeah. Preston? Prince of Preston. Yeah. yeah this he's, guy is he's he very gives... Josh Rochelle. Okay, you need to stop saying that about every player, mate. Like you, we get these comparisons. He <laughs> he's yeah, with a character. Yeah. I, yeah. He's got a bit of like flair about him. Yeah. He's got flair. Yeah. Yeah. A, a bit, bit of character. A bit of shithouse. Love that. Mm. And that will go yeah. well. If he goes to dog. Him and Wait, him and oh, Waitman up there. I, never, yeah. I never thought Kicking about goals, that. just yeah. like getting into people. I um when I when I did the Prince of Preston thing, mm. one of his mates messaged me and said, "You just like that's him, the Prince you, of Preston. You've just nailed his personality. <laughs> like the walks into a room and he's the, the yeah, guy. he's yeah, the man. Excellent. I like that. Okay, yeah. so I think that's uh, you know, dogs would probably say yes. Let's bring in a small, no more tools. Yeah. Please no more tools. Yeah, We're yeah, too tall already. Which then, then, yeah. Brings us to the Tigers. Fuck, they, man. It feels like they got every second pick. Yeah, I know. Um, so this is where the tools come in. Yeah. And the reason that I don't have them taking a tall with those first picks is because I think the tall players, the value comes in here. This is where you can get kind of back-to-back -back tools. They start, the quality's still there. It's hard to split some of these players. So I think they're going to go for Jack Whitlock, mm -hmm. one of the twins. Yep. Which Ollie will probably Yeah, Ollie, you know he's a twin. Now, will you go through it and then I'll, I'll say a bit <laughs> I'll more catch about it. I'll catch up on the night. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, yeah, honestly, the King brothers, but I think uh, Jack's got more of a Ben vibe to <laughs> yes, him than a yes. Max. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and Matt, the, yeah, Max. Um, so, yeah, very similar to the King brothers, 200 centimetres. Yep. So Whoa. big players, high upside, very, like, very dexterous at ground level. I think yeah. more so than the... The King Brothers. Yeah, they, they're they very much above ground. They don't like getting down. Yeah, they don't like getting down. These guys do. Um, and they've they've had big disposal games for key forwards. Oh, like, so higher up at the 50 or not yes, really? Yeah. Oh, because the King don't do nah. it. No, no, no. Nah, okay. they're, not they're, at all. they're deep. So these guys yeah. these guys can run. Yeah. yeah. They can run. Like um, Matt, I think particularly, maybe Jack as well have had like 20 plus disposal games. As a key forward. Yeah, like, yeah. and they almost play, like, at Murray, they've almost played as, like, a big utility Okay. at times. Yeah. A little bit of rucking and stuff like mm -hmm. that, pinch hitting. I don't know if they'll do that at AFL level. No. no. But, um, I don't know, just the scope for what you can do with that positionally to get up the ground, be that sort of athletic tall. I love that. It's a good one to go on a Tom Lynch's wing. Yes. Because Tom yeah. Lynch was very much, in, maybe not his body now, but when he first came to the scene, like... Man, he would explode out of fifty, yeah. and then you'd look up and be back in the fifty. Yes. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. If you can run, if you can <laughs> run back from. to goal, yeah. and then bring the smalls into the game, even yeah. if you don't mark it. So, and Jack took some massive marks for Vic Country in the. So they're in big, the power forwards too, where they need to be. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. So it's not. Yeah, you're not getting this kind of just up and on, then a float back occasionally. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um. So I, re I again, here's another one. I was hoping that North could somehow get their hands on Jack Whitlock. I don't think they're going to be able to. Okay. So I have to give him to the Tigers. Right. Well, Tigers clean up here. Then but, Sydney at 19. Now, Sydney, when you come off winning a f oh, almost winning a flag, it's one of those ones like, what do you really need to do here? You need to tweak something slightly. Like, there wouldn't be a big positional need, is there? In no. Sydney? No. I don't think they lack for talent. Um, I think if there's some key position defenders, they might look at that. Yep. The one that I've got them on a slight need here is a bit of a third tall player. Like, they've got Hayward. 
Yep. They don't really have anyone else. Now that they've sort of uh, reintegrated Heaney into the midfield, they've sort of lost another marking target inside that forward 50. I think what they'll do structurally, Sydney, is actually drop some of their tools yep. and go a little bit smaller. Mm-hmm. So I've got here Cooper Hines, mm. Dandenong Stingrays. Another one similar in that mould to someone like a Harvey Langford, mm-hmm. yep. um, Bo Allen, that type of player. Okay, Probably just a little bit, sitting back on quality and that's why he's fallen into the 20s and not within that top 10 group. Yeah. But he is a like he's that forward of center, big bodied mid. He's a bull. He's a bull. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got the it's actually funny. Him and Harvey Langford middle of the season both uh cut their hair. Yeah. Like and when he went for the oh, buzz cut. A bit of a you know, a mental yeah. change. Yes. I need to get a bit nice they, a bit they of both, dog in me. They both had very like I would say like sort of preppy preppy haircuts wow. going on like a bit longer and sort of back yeah. they went like so cooper went full skinhead yeah. and harvey sort of the shaved in at the sides and just, just to shift the mentality of yeah. like, what am i doing here cooper's got a bit of victor crumb if you know yes. you're sort of yeah eastern yeah. european athlete is that yeah. in the notes yeah, or not? yeah. and it, it, that? it, <laughs> is that the notes or you just make that up no then? you wouldn't know him but he's no a, a, don't do that but it, like, they play with an edge since yeah. the since the trim so reckon the trims made him go let's get nasty now I, I saw mean, his highlights. He's like, I think he idolised Dusty going up in like full stiff arm. Yeah. Okay. Like he looking loves, to yeah, idolise yeah, Dusty. Yeah, yeah loves yeah. it. And like I said, like probably doesn't have the like football quality maybe of those yeah. other ones, but still this, I reckon there's scope there to be, to be yeah. any team's kind of big bodied midfielder, mm-hmm. yeah. sort of centre player. Yeah. Okay. So, like so no, you don't think there's, I mean, it's hard to replace this guy, Chad Warner, but no insurance policy there just in case Chad walks out the door. I guess you can't really. 19. Again, like you look at a Chad Warner on my, my archetypes rating. He's mm. like that strike yeah. player. They're pretty hard to find yeah. and they're particularly hard to find getting back this far. At 19, yeah. At the, the, yeah, those, yeah. Those athletic types yeah, sure. yep. okay. don't exist or, or the football ability is not there. You know what yep. I mean? So, yeah. Um, then we've got... All right. Then we're back into uh, pick 20, Richmond again. Pick 20, Richmond again. Yep. I think they're going to go double key position forwards here. So this one's going to be Jonty Fall. Your Jonty. man. Jonty. <laughs> Your yeah. man. We've been yeah. thinking about him for a while now. Big son of a bitch. And he works really well, I think, with Jack Whitlock. So you've got the athleticism of, of Whitlock. Fall's more of a power forward. Yeah. Okay. Pretty old school. Yeah. Just gets to a lot of contests. Any ball that's in the air, he's going after it. A high degree of competitiveness. <laughs> Maybe not the talent of mm. some of these other, like a, as clean a marker yep. and those things, but he'll bring that ball to ground. So wow. it, like a, the perfect system for it. Competitive yeah. beast. Yeah. We love is. that. Yeah. 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 You got any notes there that you want to say? Or not? Oh, yeah. No. Who, would he, who comes to mind? Like, I suppose like a Charlie Kerno really is a decent comparison. No, I'm probably more athletic for mine. I think Charlie Kerno. Where'd you get that one? I'm thinking more. Nah, I'm thinking more old school. Okay. Well, probably I'm more sort of Tom Lynch, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd say more Tom Lynch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah probably, I'd say as well. Yeah. That's I reckon, right, back to the draw ball. I reckon, man, Fox Sports would probably <laughs> say Charlie Kerno. <laughs> Just leave a comment or whatever you thread on there and say, boys, you embarrass me yet. Yeah. Um, that takes us then to Big 21, Giants again. Giants again. Giants, yeah. So they're going to go small forward again here, I believe. Oh, let up with smalls. They, they love it. They okay. do, yeah, they fair do, enough. They, yeah. they just absolutely love it. They want to have the best small forward brigade in the world. Well, you can if you have every small forward. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So here they're going to take Jasper Alga, oh, who you actually- Yeah. yeah this was before when, I, when I had Hannaford. So okay. yeah. Yeah, probably um, like, again, if it's that hybrid small forward model, someone that's good airily and at ground level. Yeah. Um, country boy, so from Gippsland, came in and played for the Oakley Chargers this season yep. and then for Vic Country. So he was, he was boarding at one of the schools there and just really exciting player, like good speed, um, hits the scoreboard regularly. And I'd, like on the, the small forwards are the ones that get me the most jealous. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. They're just exciting, aren't they? Yeah, yeah they are. Um, so yeah, Giants, Alga to the Alga Giants. There. Good family, Algas. His brother Cooper was also a great player. He had an incident on a work site and he got, I uh, can't remember what tool it was, but something came off and got him in the eye. Oh, shit. And oh. I, I went out there and met Cooper and Jasper and his family, and like lovely family. So I think his brother is younger, Jasper. I was like, no, no, well, I'm going to try and, you know, if you can't get there, I'm definitely getting there. So it's, that'll be good to yeah, see. Wow. On the yeah, night. yeah, yeah. Didn't so, know that story. Yeah, from Warrigal. The uh, you know that though, Ollie. Yeah, yeah, Warrigal. Yeah. yeah. Well, they call what? What's the what's Warrigal? What? Uh, Seagulls. They are they even nice. Um, pick tw- <laughs> just single names. Uh, pick twenty-two, Sydney. Pick twenty-two, Sydney. They're gonna have a bid here. 
okay. on the Brisbane Lions Academy product, Sam Marshall. Mm-hmm. Um, don't have any inside info on this one. I just no. think the Swans tend to bid on players. Yeah. They're just that. Uh, just got that bit in them. Like, they, yeah, yeah, we'll make you work for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They want to see you get a win. Yep. So, yeah, Sam Marshall. Um, so, that'll knock the order back. Another one. What's yep. that, the fourth? Fourth bid we've had? Pretty much, yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Uh, and then the Swans will go for that key position defender that, okay. that I said that they would like to get through. I think they've delisted Hamling, Francis yep. as well. So, just bring in a, a bit of a high-quality one. Matt Whitlock, brother of Jack. Again, similar... Similar profile, really. They're both really athletic key position players. Matt's played more behind the ball, whereas mm-hmm. Jack's played more forward. But they 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 dabble. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he's just going to be a really high quality, tall, two hundred centimeters, so he can play on those on those big bodies for the Swans going Love forward. That. Well, that would round out the first round. Mm-hmm. Done. That's the mock. That's the definitive That's, mock. That's look, mate. Credit to you because there's a lot going on. Yeah. Have we got there's, one more for Richmond? Uh, Richmond to pick twenty three <laughs> and at the round if they get pushed yes. back, then Sydney. Yes. So that'd be so Richmond would go again still in the first round. It's still, yeah, it's oh, it's still the first when round. When the academies come in. Oh, you still go first round. They yeah. are. We're still in it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, okay. Richmond. Richmond. Yep. So they've got here the Ruck, Alex Dodson. And again, mm-hmm. I think this comes into the little bit of the speculative play, having all of those picks. He's the he's probably the most talented ruck we've seen in recent years come through. Basketball mm-hmm. product. Could have gone on and had a, a career. <laughs> in basketball, yep. um, has had a scholarship even, I believe, and really had to decide whether he was going to play basketball or football this year. Yep. Decided to choose footy, still got a lot of growth to go. Like he's certainly not dominating, but um, he's a big hit out Ruckman, yep. like 204 centimetres, athletic as anything. Oh, mate, they'll just they'll play him on a list and say, you just grow for five years. Yeah, 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 yeah he's one of those that ones. We'll give you another five years <laughs> yeah, to keep yeah. growing. Yeah, he'll, okay. never, he'll have a career for yep. sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, Okay. Yeah, but yeah, high high upside rock and probably someone that they see that can give him a fair bit on the transition and not just be a, a plonk there. Yep. Kind of ruckman. So Okay. Yeah. Mate, credit to yeah. First round done. Definitive mock draft is in the books. Who knows what's gonna happen? A lot of moving pieces, a lot of bidding going on, a lot of splitting yep. picks potentially. Wednesday night's gonna be absolute carnage. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It's time for a feed. I hope you're hungry. A delicious feed here on the Sports Bets feed. Go and get the app if you haven't got it already, then create an account for the feed. Follow myself, follow Ollie. If you do have an account, you'll see it down the bottom there. It's feed. And get hungry because this week. It's a delicious one. We've got the NFL. Staying with the NFL. Steelers to win. Detroit, who can't stop scoring points at the moment. They're just out of this world. Commanders also have come from nowhere this season. Got them to win in the feed. Chiefs lost last week. Got them to bounce back this week against the Panthers. Put things back on track for them. And the last thing we have in this feed is the cricket. I am getting around the cricket this, this summer. I think it's time that I try and just, you know, immerse myself in cricket. So... I'm back in the Aussies here, obviously, to win the first test against India. Starts on Friday, so they're also in this multi here. You'll go find that, as I said, on Sportsbet's app, in the feed, follow myself, follow Ollie. I'll be there with a bunch of other bets throughout the week or during the weekend. Go and check it out. We did, um, if you can hang around for a few more questions, we opened up the questions to listeners. Cool. To just ask you what's going on here, a few things. Um, Let's pick off this one. We already covered that one. Um, are there any Smokies for Collingwood's first pick at pick number 476? So they have pick 52, <laughs> 55, 60, 66, 82. I guess, how, how deep is this thing? Is yeah, good at so that pick, that 52, 52, we'll focus on that. I think that's going to come in, be mid 40s. Yeah. By the time the, the bids all get eaten up. I, I wouldn't say maybe like a Smokey. Um, yep. at that pick, but I think they'll be targeting a key position player. There's a few around the mark, those developing tools that you just mm-hmm. sort of reeled off. I think Floyd Burmeister, if he's still available, he's an ex-high jumper, turned to footy, very raw talent, around the 200 centimetre mark, has played as a ruck forward. I think they could go for him. Thomas Sims, another 200 centimetre key forward that developed pretty quickly this year, made it to Vic Metro. Yeah. But I think they'll be definitely looking key position. Gabriel Stumpf is another one that dominated the combine Probably didn't put the the numbers down that you mm-hmm. would have liked across the season, but mm-hmm. more of an athletic type. Okay. And Colin would like those guys that they can just yeah. create a contest. Oh, they're already stacked. They went out and did their thing. Got every yeah. stud. Yeah, exactly. Really already established stud. Houston Perryman. So they laugh from regardless. Um, from Rich, if Trainer has had four concussions at 18, he may not have the longest career. Does he slide because of it? It's a really good question. Um, 
a lot like there's been tons of speculation about this i don't think like anyone on the outside really knows the facts about that and concussion's such a gray area that it's mm. a tough one i think if like genuinely when you're dealing with something like concussion if the afl clubs like they do largely see the draft as a risk management exercise mm. in some yeah. ways like they do they genuinely do so if they believe that he's had a lot and his concussions coming on you know more quickly than what mm for other players then they he will slide for sure okay yeah um angus are there any 23 year old carpenters around geelong or geelong going to draft that end up being four-time australians <laughs> probably <laughs> probably <laughs> they'll find somewhere there is it but, how is it we got some mature players in this draft or is yeah it just there's young? a couple, couple of state league guys yep. um sam davidson uh riley bice yep from werribee uh as well i think this draft maybe not be not be as fun for that kind of player, just in the sense that it's deep. Yeah. So I don't know if clubs are going to say, like, for lack of a better word, waste the draft pick mm-hmm. on a mature age player when they could maybe rookie him, like yeah. get get yeah. someone in the in the rookie draft as well, or even you know the mid season draft. So I think we'll see less of those players. I think Davidson's in the mix, Bice is in the mix yeah. as well. Yeah. But it'll be tough because you'll be banking on it'll be that player. You kind of know what they are, mm. but maybe lack a little bit of upside compared to that, you know, maybe raw 18 year old. Mm. Yeah. So huge, mate. All these other questions we pretty much answered when we're going through everything. There's a lot of stuff about what a West Coast need to do that they've butchered the draft already. A lot of stuff about Melbourne not taking a forward. Um, what do the Swans need to do to win the grand final next year? Um, <laughs> besides Probably. mental fortitude. <laughs> <laughs> don't know if a draft. No. Yeah. Oh, this one Fix here. Where, where does Jackson Artemis sit in the rankings? Jackson Artemis. Yeah, good question. I didn't. He didn't make my top sixty. Um, be, like being in Victoria, it is always a little bit more difficult to to cover the Western yep. Australian and the South Australian, the interstate guys. Like just being here, so there is that. I think he's a, a good, highly skilled player. I reckon he's a chance later in the draft, 60, 70, somewhere in that mix. Mm-hmm. Um, good sort of like yeah, outside halfback flanker type. One that hasn't really gone onto the inside, I suppose. So yeah, raw talent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Late, late pick. And the last one, I think we kind of spoke about it already, but will Levi Ashcroft be better than Will? I'm going to I'm gonna go uh, different here and say no. Okay. okay. Look, I, I did a comparison video on, on those two a little while back and I had a look at their numbers at under 18 level, compared them, and Will's, for, for, like, Will's was significantly, significantly stronger in the contested football side of the game. Yeah. So I think Will's superior at stoppages. Mm-hmm. Um, Levi has a few more things like his running ability that I mentioned, but I think Will's got more that sort of stand him in. Is Will bigger? Uh, or? Will's taller. Yeah. I think he's actually a little bit, as far as like the body, he's actually smaller. Okay. As in like taller and skinnier. Yeah. And uh, Levi's a little bit more nuggety. Yep. Um, which you'd think would lean more to the contested possession being mm. in Levi's favour, but it's yeah. actually in, in Will's. Yeah. And yeah. Fair enough. Well, mate, you're every chance to get drafted with one of Richmond's picks because that was just unbelievable. Yeah. The way you've done that, you might go, you might be off the board by pick 10 there. So, mate, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing how it unfolds and your work. I, I, I keep saying it. If anyone is listening who's a recruiter in the yeah. AFL club, like give him a job. He knows, you know, it back to front, mate. Like it's unbelievable. So thank, thank you. What's your, what's your highlight? What are you looking forward to? Now you've done the work. Like what do you sit back and watch the draft and go, okay, that's a cool moment. Like yeah. I enjoy that. Is this also I, your Christmas? Yeah. 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 Like, open yeah. a bottle of Pino and yeah. just watch it all like, What do you know what? Like I was, a, I was a teacher before this. It's weird. I feel like even though I don't really have that much to do with the actual guys that play, like I feel a bit like a teacher watching your- <laughs> That's yeah. proud of them. This, this, sounds, so stu- proud this of them. sounds so proud Yeah, like I am. I'm like, I'm like, I get to see that player, the enjoyment that they have. I've kind of watched them all through the season, even though I've had no impact at all yeah. on their actual careers. I'm not, I'm not teaching no. them, but yeah, yeah. You, you feel a bit- You know them. Yeah, well, you know feel you. invested in it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's exciting. And I, I'm just keen for something like a bit- big and interesting to happen on the night. Like you do your mm. mock drafts and stuff like that, but if someone wants to blow it up, I think that's cool too. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't think you have to be too obsessed with getting it yeah. absolutely yeah. spot on. That's like a it's of it. it's no. a bit of fun. And I've enjoyed doing some like kind of weird mocks as well, where you do some random stuff just to help bring, yeah. bring people into it. hundred percent. Well, thank you for coming on because I think yeah. this has been great. It's been, you know, very informative. Yeah. Which is a good change of pace for us because we don't know. We knew nothing about the draft. Like Ollie well, was reading someone off there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was good that people, you know, get the insight and more of the players. Yeah, absolutely. How the bidding works, the points, mate. So hopefully North do well. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Saints. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope so. Yeah. 
Well, you know the players now, so yeah, you, I'm you across it now. Back to front and Blues. Let's hope that Sid's there by yeah. pick three, four, whatever it ends up mm. being. So, all right, thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, mate. <laughs> You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.